activating our GPS, and we were been doing, a, been doing a study on the book of Ephesians, and it ties into the idea that God's been trying to impress upon us. Life isn't about each one of us. The more we make it about us, the more we get discouraged, the more we get disappointed, things aren't happening the way we want it for us in our time. All these things begin to de deteriorate our whole motivations, right motivations in life, and God's trying to bring us back on track, and you know, GPS in this situation. And as I was going through the, the Bible, this book of Ephesians, and that's the biggest thing that I could really imagine. No, pretty much all of us nowadays, you know, we, we track things with our phone and our GPS systems. We put in the uh, where we're trying to go, maybe. And a lot of times, it'll, let's say, what it, the question it usually has is your starting address, right? And uh, you got to choose a starting address, or you could just say your location. Well, one of the main things that we're focusing on here today is letting, now you got a choice. You can put in your location, right, your starting location, or you can say, my location, you find me. Yes. One of the things that we want to learn here today, there's times in our lives that we got to say, Holy Spirit, where am I? Amen. Because sometimes we want to tell God where we are, where we're going, what we're doing, how he's going to do it for us. And if it doesn't happen that way, we just almost push him to the side. All right, I'll just do it myself, God, right? And what God is trying to say, let's activate our GPS first and foremost. Hashtag, hashtag first point is location. Yes. Let's take a look at that here today. So really, the activating our GPS or our location, it's, it's answered a couple questions. It's answered, where are we? Now, in a geographical sense, you're going to you turn on your GPS, and a lot of times if it identifies your location, it's just like, okay, where am I? But in reality, what God's trying to teach us here today or remind us about in this analogy is that, who are we? You can't even know where you are on the, on the spiritual map of things unless you understand who you are. And what Paul was talking to the Ephesians about, and we're basically, we're going to kind of pull three points out of the first three chapters of Ephesians, and he's, he's trying, trying to help them understand who they are, because you don't even know where you are until you know who you are in the, in the kingdom of God. Because a lot of us are trying to find out where we are, we don't even know who we are. Somebody told us I was this. I got the last name that is this. Half, ha, helper. Helper means half bought. Okay, that's where I came from, right? <laughs> I don't know if you ever did your DNA deal on what your last name means. That's why you have so many names that are something son. Williams. Uh, I, I don't know. That's right. Not, uh, Williams' son. You know, it's, well, that was Williams' son. Johnson's. That was John's son. You know, Leif uh, Erickson. That was. Lee, that was Eric's son, right? And uh, we know, but there's a bigger, there's a, there, when I, I say that to say this, we take on the name of Christ. Amen. And there's, this is what God is trying to help us understand. We get confused as to who we are. And, and Paul is trying to explain to the Ephesians, okay, we got to get your GPS situated here. Just like you would turn on your GPS to try to figure out where you are geographically, the Holy Spirit's trying to say, turn me on so we can figure out and help you identify where you are at spiritually so we can get you where you need to go. First thing we got to do is identify location. Because if you're going to try to go anywhere, if you don't have a starting point and ending point, Somebody comes to you and says, I need directions. And what if, that, what if they say, that's all, I, all, all I'm asking? What are you going to ask them? Starting point, ending point, right? Then I'll tell you how to get there. We, in order for us to know where we are, we got to know who we are in Christ. And a lot of us aren't living who we are in Christ. And this is what Paul is talking to Ephesians. That's what God wants to talk to us about this. You don't even understand. If you understand Christmas, Christmas answers this very question. A lot of us are going through, and we're, you know, some, for some people, it's the most depressed day of the year. Because why? Because it's about them. If you understand what Christmas is about, I don't, I don't care if you're living in a, in a shoebox yourself, you're going to understand, you know, it ain't going to be this way forever. That's right. Because I'm a child of God. I'm going to go to the big house someday. Yeah. See, Christmas then takes on a whole new meaning. Instead of being depressed and feeling alone, you can be impressed to know that, you know what, it's not going to forever be like this. Yeah. I got, there's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's got a place for me and I'm going there. And this is just a day passing through. And so let's get on to some of the points of this. So the first one is, uh, there's a GPS in us. So let's, let's take a look at the, te the text in this. And now that doesn't mean y'all got the chip, okay? Somebody said, wait a minute, is he talking about the chip? No, we ain't talking about the chip. This is better than that. Okay, in Ephesians it says, 
Paul, and I'm just pulling out a part of this passage in chapter 1. And Paul says, Praise be to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly, in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And we're waiting under the Christmas tree for something. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you ever think about that? We have every blessing that we could ever have in Christ who created everything. Things that we don't even understand how he created, even us. We go to the doctor and they say, well, you know, you're made up of these chemicals. We don't even know how everything interacts, but we're just telling you, based on somewhat of a normal person, this is what it looks like. And God created all that. We're, like I said, we're waiting to open, open some kind of a box we're grabbing on it to find significance. Number four says, for he chose us in, verse four, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. That's a key right there. When you ever create something, there's purpose and design in the things that get created. You understand that? You believe that, right? So if, you, if you're trying to figure out who you are in Christ, the very first thing you've got to see, you've got to read this and you cannot ignore it. The devil wants us to ignore this verse. This is one of the most important verses. Keys to your life. If you don't get this key to your life down pat, you're going to live a frustrated person, angry, chasing all these other things, trying to fulfill your life. It says he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be what? Holy and blameless. Wait a minute, though. I wanted to be chosen as the captain of the team. I wanted to be one to be chosen to sing that part. I wanted to want to be chosen to, to, to lead this or to lead that. I wanted to want to be chosen to, to look be chosen the prettiest person in school or the prettiest person at, or the smartest person at work or the most respected person at work or I get that parking spot or or that nobody's gonna cuss me out today. It didn't say nobody was ever gonna gonna stop cussing you out or cussing you out, does it? No. But it says that we were chosen to be what? Holy and blameless. You want a life key right there? That's a, that's a different paradigm than what the devil tries to convince you what you, you, you're after, right? Yeah. And so in love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. I just told you about what last names mean, right? What do the last name, names mean? They mean they're connecting people to who their parents are, who their heritage are, their lineage. When we are chosen to be adopted, we are a Christian. Why? Because now we are part of the family of God. I took on his name. There's a whole different family going on here, right? You can trace your family lineage, which means way less than this lineage means. You can leave this earth having any lineage you want, but if you don't have the lineage as, as a Christian, it ain't going to be, you're not coming home. See how important this is what the devil tries to get you confused of? In life? Well, I was just born into this family. I was just, you know, born, I didn't have a family. You know what I Become a Christian. You're being, you're, you're, you just got adopted into the most important family in eternity. See, the devil wants to tell us for different reasons. Some, sometimes he gets people to feel too significant about their, their last name or who they are or their education. And then sometimes it's the opposite way. He wants to be, take almost feel like people are insignificant because of the other. But God's just saying here, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Accordance with his pleasure and will, it's pleasing for him to, for you to be a son or daughter. How about that? Because there's some of you sitting here today, you say, you know what? My mom and dad hated me. My mom hated me, or my dad hated me, or my mom and dad used to fight over me. Some of you came from divorced families where they used you and you were like a tug of war in the middle, and it wasn't even about you anymore. It was about their own psyche and whether they were going to feel good about themselves as a parent. So that, you know, they'd send the other parents a bum, and, the, and then the other parents said the other parents a bum. And, you know, and I'm just keeping it real. This is what happens, right? This is why divorce is hard. It wasn't meant to be that way. Divorce was supposed to be two people that are coming under under the uh, God's guidance and direction to, to point people to grow them up in the ways of Christ. But our world today has got, uh, Satan tries to break that down and break that down. And the real family that we're really wanting to make sure that we never fall away from is the family of God. That's why... Satan loves to get people, get distracted with church. Well, let's go get you busy with something else. Let's get, get you busy with something else over here. Let's get you busy with something else over here. Because if he can begin to get you dragged away, then you begin to forget about the family of God that you come part of. Well, I can be a Christian and not be go to church. Well, you probably can be, but you're really not executing the plan that God has for you, which leads you out of his blessings, his favor, and the whole purposes in life. And so as we continue to look at verse 6, it says, To the praise and His glorious grace, 
which he has freely given us in what? In the one he loves. It's free, right? Let's go to the next verse. Verse 13, he says, He marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. What's happened? He put a seal in us. Now, this is really what we're talking about, the, the GPS system that God put in us. When you are born again, this GPS system is the Holy Spirit in you trying to direct your life. Now, how many of you know if you have a GPS on your car, you can do, you have two things to choose. You can choose to turn it on or not. Well, let's first thing identify we all have access to this God's GPS to making right choices right into these promises that God has for us. See, in the, the purpose here, it says, for the Holy Spirit is to guarantee our inheritance. Where's the inheritance? That's a directional thing, correct? And so if you're not uh, accepting the fact that you have this Holy Spirit in you that wants to direct your life, you might not get where you're going to go. Because I promise you, there's other spirits out there just as willing to speak into your life to say, come here, come here, and do this and do that, and get caught up in this, get caught up in that. There's a lot of us that have a whole bunch of uh, road wrecks behind us that we created because we, weren't, we didn't have our GPS on. And it says, is the deposit, why? For, for those who are God's possession. God's possession puts you in position. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. God's, possession God's possession puts you in position. Puts you in position. <laughs> so God is trying to help us identify with ourselves that, that, that being in, in touch with God, being in the possession of God and surrendering to God puts us in to his uh Really, his, his, his whole uh, possession and position to where he wants us in life. And that's for his praise and glory, not ours. How many know that we're good at trying to position ourselves for our own praise and glory? Okay. I ain't doing that. I was talking to my son the other day. We were just talking about things that you want to do or don't want to do. And I said this. I said, the road to hell is paved with the I don't want to's. The road to heaven was paved with I don't want to, but I will. Yep. See the difference there? See, a lot of Christians fall down. A lot of Christians have been really, they're not a whole lot of conviction when sometimes when it comes to I will, the, the I wills that you should be doing versus what you want to do. A lot of Christians are, are, are relegating to the fact that I don't have to do it unless I feel like doing it. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If that's the case today, nobody in here would be saved today. Nobody. Because when Jesus was there praying at the, the night before the, uh, the death on the cross, he says, Father, take this cup. Because he didn't want to. He didn't want to. But he said, I will. Amen. The next time you're making a decision to do something just because you don't want to, think about what Jesus did for you. Mm. Some of us, we got, we got to really think about that for a second. How many of you have ever really realized that, that maybe you've gravitated to a point where you're like, well, if I don't feel like it, I don't have to. The road to hell is paved with I don't want to. It is. Our road to hell would have been paved to I don't want to. Right? Yes. If Jesus didn't say, but I will. Yeah. <clears throat> let's go this, let's break this down here a little bit. Now we're just gonna. So point one, this GPS in us, which is the Holy Spirit, is is we're, means that we're chosen to choose God because God is trying to get us to make a decision every day. To choose God. He's blessed us with every blessing in Christ. But we're not even going to, unless we really turn our GPS on, we're not even going to realize it. He chose us in him to be holy and blameless inside. We talked about that, right? And we were marked in him with a seal, the Holy Spirit. This is a deposit in those who are God's possession. So first thing, we got to make sure that we do, that we acknowledge that we are God's possession. If we're not God's possession, then we don't have, we're not in position. Let's say that again. If you're not God's possession, you're not in position. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. are you God's possession? Are you God's possession? If, not, if not, get Jesus, get Jesus. And, get in position. and get in position. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all, we're looking at all this here today. Oh, it's so beautiful. The lights are great. This is a, these are like birthday candles for Jesus. To acknowledge the fact that we got a Savior. Yes. We got a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. We have a Lord and Savior here today. Yes. This isn't. Yes. <laughs> that one, the other one's fine for now. 
Because as we go through life, the devil's always going to be trying to allow us to, to try to sidestep the need and the necessity to let the Holy Spirit come alive in us. Then we start making decisions based on our own decision making. Some people have caught being smart, right? How many of you ever made a good decision? You're just like, man, I must be so smart. You know, I just be like, and yeah, go tell somebody, right? <laughs> man, I did this. You know, everybody said how smart I was, you know, or how good of a decision that I made. Yeah. But unless we're really, how many know God, not even good decisions aren't necessarily God decisions, right? Yeah. But when it is a God decision, praise God, right? Amen. That'd be like taking the GPS and just saying, man, I found this place all by myself. I got here right where I am. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. So first fact, you got a GPS. Secondly, you got to turn it on. We're pretty good at squelching the Holy Spirit. Honestly, we are. You know, we're just, and sometimes we even blame it on God then too. You ever see that sometimes? Well, God told me to do this. God, no, God didn't tell you anything. You did what you did, and you're just trying to put God's name on it so that you're not feeling responsible. And or give permission for us to do things that aren't associated with God's purposes for our lives. So the second thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the GPS. Let's go to the, the, a passage that might help us with this. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, As for you, you are dead in your transgression. So Paul's trying to help us identify, without Christ, Christ where are we really? Because a lot of times we basically think, well, I'm basically a good person. I think I can make this. I think I can do this. So as for you, you are what? Dead in your transgressions and sins and in which you used to live, when you were followed by the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now working all those who are disobedient. You guys, that's a warning. All, all of us sitting in here at some point before we were saved, we weren't in the GPS that God had us in. The Holy Spirit was not directing our lives. But the reality of it is, once we surrender to God, then God can direct our lives. And God can help us become, uh, and then cause it, it means that we got to walk in more humility sometimes. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we're just proud of being the decision maker. We're just proud of being the one in the know. We're just proud of being the one. Now you got to be, you can be a competent decision maker. But if you're hearing from the Holy Spirit, that increases your ability to be where God wants you to be. Amen. And so as we continue to read this, it, Spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Verse 3 says, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. Paul says who? All of us. Paul says who? All, All of us. So we can't act like we didn't. Our GPS, if you want to pull up the historical data on your GPS, how many want to do that? He's like, oh, no, please don't go there, Pastor Jim. <laughs> I mean, if you're like me, it's like, okay, no, okay, all right, now you put it that way, okay, historically, now I get it, okay, that God has do, is doing a miracle in me. And that this, this identifying where I am and where I'm at the map helps me see where I was so I don't go back there. You know why it's so important sometimes to understand that? This is what Paul's trying to tell the Ephesians. Don't go back to those old ways. There's some of us in here that when the devil tries to slip us back into the old ways, old thinking, old ways, whatever it might be. All these things to gratify the cravings of our sinful nature. Some of us used to have addictive behaviors. We got rid of them. Then all of a sudden they started to try to creep back. Well, I started really getting stressed. And then all of a sudden I got caught up in this. And then this happened. We can make all the excuses we want. The reality of it is when Jesus at any point in our life, we've got the option to turn on our GPS and find our way through with Jesus or take the side routes with the devil. And the devil usually just wants to pay play patty cake with us for a while just to keep us occupied. <laughs> And you find there's some of us in here and some of us in some areas we haven't grown spiritually because the devil gave us something to play panic game with him until we're serious about turning on our GPS. There's some of us struggle with pornography because we're still playing panic game with our morality. Some of us here are struggling with other addictive behaviors because we're, we're trying to make an excuse for that because this helps me cope. And instead of turning on your GPS, the greatest coping mechanism you will ever have is turn on your GPS. And some of us you know, just struggle with our spiritual growth because, well, I need more sleep. Well, I just don't have enough time. We all have enough time to get with Jesus and grow in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so he goes on to say, all of us who lived among them at one time, we just agreed on that. Gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature 
And following its desires and thoughts, like the rest, we were by nature, check this out, we were what? Objects of wrath. We were what? Objects of wrath. Why? Because just like most of us sitting in here, we realize and agree when somebody does something wrong, they need to pay for that, right? And the reality of it is, and without Jesus, we all say it all the time, right? We did the crime, Jesus did our time. But to understand that we were objects of wrath without Jesus, how about that? And it doesn't, it doesn't mean you might be the person here that seems to have it quote-unquote the most together. Without Jesus, we are an object of what? Wrath. wrath. Without Jesus, we are an object of what? Wrath. wrath. Why is this so important, all this lights and stuff? Because it reminds us that without this truth of the story behind Christmas, we're an object of God's wrath. We got the greatest gift that we could ever. We got bought out. We got bought out by Jesus. That's the greatest gift ever. This year, regardless of what you see under your tree or whatever you have, let's get back to the real meaning of Christmas. Amen? Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. And it says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us what? Alive. First it said we were dead. Now it says we are what? Alive in what? Right. In Christ. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about coming alive. The lights are off, but the lights come on. Because all of a sudden, whoa, there's a proclamation I'm no longer dead. The lights off represent being dead. Lights on represent life in Christ. When you're going around looking at all the lights this year more than any other year in the past, can you associate it with the fact that you are alive in Christ Jesus? The light came on inside. And it says it, it was by grace that you have been saved. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. If you're feeling lonely over the holidays, Check this out. You won't be forever. You won't be forever. You know sometimes people in the biggest crowd sometimes feel the most lonely? You can, you can be home and feel lonely. You can be in the biggest crowd and feel lonely. Well, I'm really not like any of these people. The devil will use whatever trick he wants you to believe to get you to feel like you're, you're different. It's okay for everyone else, but not you. And Jesus is saying, you know what? You're about to say, I made you, I create you in my image just like everyone else out there. And if you're going to succumb to Satan's lies and thoughts about you, it's going to be hard. But you got to turn on your GPS and those lies will start getting tra traded for God's truths. Amen? Amen? So it says in verse 7, it says that in order in the coming ages that he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in who? Christ Jesus. God ain't broke. The riches of his grace. Turn to your neighbor and say, God ain't broke. God ain't broke. Let's go to the next slide. And for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. This not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works. So that no one can what? Right. So that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship. We are whose workmanship? God. We are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do what we want so that we look good. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it says? No, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when you go to work, usually do you usually have a job list, or do they just kind of let you do whatever you want to do? You say, well, I can do whatever you want to, I want to do. Not really, because you've got to make the company money, right? Because they're paying you to do what they can do to make a profit so they can keep hiring people and, and raising people up, right? And... The reality of it is God's got a job for all of us to do. We didn't write our own plan. It says here that God prepared where? In advance. For who to do? For all of us to do. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. Let's go to the next slide. Let's break it down like this. So when you turn on your GPS, you realize this. And again, you turn on your GPS and really, in God's sense, you get all the back data too. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. You want to see my back data? You want to see my back data? <laughs> I almost wrote when you said that. Because <laughs> we were dead in Christ, dead in our sin. You guys, our back data looks horrible, right? Our back data looks horrible. And sometimes even today at times. For all the knowledge and the information we have about God, and sometimes some of us still let, the, let ourselves struggle with some of the things that we still struggle with, we guys just say, wow. 
Why am I still in this spot with this problem? Let me get on with Jesus. So turn on your GPS so that you can see. Not only it helps you identify things like that that it just says, okay, this has to go. I need to be, now the GPS makes you alive in Christ and shows you the direction and the things that you should be doing. Does that make sense? We are saved by grace through faith. That means we're gifted. Do you ever go, you hear somebody, wow, that's a gifted child there. They're an overachiever. That's who we all are in Christ. Without Christ, we're underachieving. With Christ, we're overachieving in our own strength. So you want to be an underachiever or an overachiever? You're gifted. Because the Holy Spirit in you, now your GPS can help you accomplish things you never could have otherwise. We are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. You're God's workmanship. You are God's workmanship. And God don't make no junk. And God don't make no junk. See, a lot of us sitting in here, there's some people in here just feel like, you know what? That's the, I, 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 you know, you can say that, but I'm different. I see other people doing this, and I can't do that. And then this person does that, but I can't do that. And I, that person's got money, I'm broke. This person can, has this kind of a, a job, but I ain't. This person was raised in that kind of a home, they're blessed, look at me. Yeah. You know, I was bred bumps from family to family. Yeah. <coughs> God's workmanship, and God don't make no junk. That's why you gotta turn on your GPS. You turn on your GPS and all those confusing directions get out, move out the way, right? It says to good, to do good works prepared in advance. If you turn on your GPS, you're going to do things God wants you to do. Not the things that, because a lot of us do things to, to create a feeling. That's why we do things because we don't want to. Uh, we're, too, we're doing things sometimes to create a feeling. You want to have the best feeling you could ever have? Walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus and see what happens then. That's your best feeling you can ever get. And the devil will try to put interferences in there to get you to believe that that's not your best life for you. He's got good works prepared in advance for you. This is not of ourselves. Turn to your neighbor. This ain't of you. This ain't of you. And it ain't of me. It ain't of me. So that none of us can boast. No boasting, right? So the second thing, he's got to turn your GPS on. See, a lot of us in here, how I many you know whenever you want to make a dumb decision, you, you, you make sure that GPS is off? I mean, in a spiritual sense, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, we're just straight being honest. Well, well, it's probably easier to get for a forgiveness from God than permission. Right? Let's go to the next line. Third thing we've got to realize is we got to trust the GPS. I mean, I've been somewhere and you didn't trust the GPS. Yeah. Right? Let's go to the, uh, the text on this one. In Ephesians chapter 3, it says, In him and through him, in him, or, I'm sorry, through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and what? Confidence. If you turn on your GPS in Christ, you can, you can have freedom and what? Confidence. Verse 17 says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep, the love of Christ and to know that this love surpasses all knowledge. Now we did this Bible study. That was probably one of the things that I felt like God wanted us to just spend time on. So, Because most people do things because they want to feel loved. But when you can really get let the Holy Spirit help you understand how deep, how wide the, 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 the depth of God's love is for you, that changes everything. You start treating people different. Instead of looking like an extractor, you're making deposits. Because sometimes we bump into people and we want to we want to make it we want to get it make a, a, uh, get a deposit into us and if not then we we snarl maybe at that person. <coughs> Once you understand how full the love of God is in your life, now you're just going around making deposits in everybody else's life because you overflow. Why don't you be that person? As he continues to say. And to know that this love surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to what? To the measure of what? Fullness of God. You get filled to the fullness of God, but when you get bumped, what's going to come out? God. So the next time you... See, honestly, as Christians, <coughs> anger, uh, cussing, and chewing people out, and, and snapping off like that, and stuff like that, that's an indication you're not filled full of God. You're still filled with some other stuff. 
I mean, the opposite can be true too. I mean, you can have straight up apathy. That means that because when you because the full measure of God's gets you act when you should, how you should, at all times. Let's go to the next slide. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever um, ask or imagine, according to whose power? His power. I mean, he feels tired sometimes. Well, I can't do it anymore, right? That's where, you, when you get at the end of your row, that's when you'll find God the most doing work. Here you go. So it says, according to the power that is at work within us. Wait a minute. He just said, do more than we can ever ask or imagine according to this power that work where? Within us. Because a lot of us say, well, God's at work over here with this power. God's at work over here with this power. No, this text says he's at work where? Within us. If you got the power of God, it's like this dynamite power, dunamis. It can blow things up. Let's blow up those bad things in the world that are trying to keep you down in your thoughts and the behaviors. And let's allow the power of God to explode the ability of his, of his ability in you. Because in our strength, can we do it? No. You're going to want to quit, give up, cuss somebody out, tell somebody else it's their fault. In God's strength, you're going to take on exactly, you get into his GPS. You do what you should, when you should, how you should. All you can do then is what? All you can do. Because sometimes we want to try to do more than we're called to do. That's the other side of it. And to him be the glory. Wait a minute. What? To who? Him be the glory. Why not me? Just a little bit. I remember this preacher one time saying that he was a big in the deliverance ministry. Remember he had a guy... He's doing deliverance ministry, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a lot of times in his things, he'd have a lot of manifestations of demonic stuff, and and, uh, and he was like, hey, you need to come here, I just need to pray for you for pride, and this guy had kind of a prophetic gifting, too, and uh, there's almost a voice came out and says, oh, you don't need me, I'm just little pride, or something like that, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the gatekeepers to other problems, right? Little pride, big pride. Okay, so in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations and forever. For him, who gets the glory? He does. Let's go to the next slide. So the third thing here is that we got to trust the GPS. we got to trust God. And that, because in, in God, we're free and confident. What did the text say? We're free and what? We're confident. You know, the reality of it is, the, the confidence that we have, I, I know yesterday we had uh, kicked off some tournaments for a bunch of our teams at the park and I got the coaches together, and we were praying together, and one of the things that God was sharing with me was that and as I'm praying, it just was coming out uh, that we're praying, Lord, help us take care of these kids, that these are your kids, they're not our kids, and, and help us as coaches, you know, be humble because you're in control, but also help us to be confident because you're in control. God's doing both. We can be humble because he's in control, but we can also be very confident when he's in control. You see those two things, how they work together? Our humility and confidence come at uh, the same thing. And that's what God's saying, what I believe is saying right here in Ephesians, is that, that we're free and confident because God's in control. It's okay. We don't need to be. We just need to, be, we just need to follow the GPS. How many of you know sometimes when you follow your GPS, you just kind of think, man, I don't know if that's right. I'm just, you're feeling stupid sometimes, right? You follow the GPS thinking, man, I don't know if I trust this. I really should be, I should know where we're going right now. But if you follow the GPS, all of a sudden, bam, well, I guess here we are. Filled and then with the, all the fullness of God. If you trust God, you turn on the Holy Spirit's directioning system in your life, you're going to be filled with the fullness of God. According to whose power? God's power, not our power. And then to who be the glory? God be the glory, yeah. And then the GPS here, one thing you guys know about GPS, bad signal, bad directions, right? You ever been there? Adi on the way to the cabin. <laughs> that was a scenic route for about 45 minutes in northern, northwestern Wisconsin. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you can lose a, little, lose a signal. The reason I throw this in there because that happens to us in life too. And the reason that happens is a lot of things. Sometimes... We, we're not really trying to hear from God, and maybe sometimes we really, uh, you know, like when, even with the GPS, uh, you know, sometimes you've got so many other distractions that are getting in the way uh, that you're, it's not getting through. Um, 
We gotta remember that the GPS enhances the paper copy, you know, which is the Bible, the Word of God, right? So whatever you feel like directions or decisions that you're making in your life, God will never contradict the paper version. Do you understand that? Because I've had so many people say, well, God told me to do this, God told me to do that. And I'm thinking, that's a different God you're listening to because that directly contradicts the Bible. God will, you know, God will never contradict himself. Jesus himself, when they tried to trick him, did you ever see what he did? He always read, he always was structured, his GPS brought him back to the paper copy. He said, well, scripture says, right? It always goes back to the paper copy. When you're trying to follow the Holy Spirit and be, but one of the things I think that the Holy Spirit is really trying to do is give you a confidence for who you are in Christ. Know who you are. Well, actually, that's coming up in the next slide. Go ahead to the next. So the Holy Spirit, so at, activating our GPS is our location, first and foremost, in our message today. The Holy Spirit, right? It's the GPS in us. Turn it on. Don't turn off the Holy Spirit. You know when the Holy Spirit, the more you can, and again, the more you get in the Word of God, you know that the Holy Spirit's trying to uh, confirm things in your life, right? And then you got to trust the GPS. you got to trust God. There's times in our lives where it seems like we can make all these other decisions because I'm smart enough. But God's saying, well, this is, a, this is what the Word of God says, right? Let's go to the next slide. Where you are is determined by knowing who you are in Christ. No longer do you need to feel small. No longer do you need to feel like you have to be big. You can just be who God created you to be. And that's okay. So when you turn on your GPS, one of the most things it's going to bring into your life, it's going to be, I'm a child of God. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm on His mission in His power. Let's say that together. I'm a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, on His mission in His power. Let's say it again. I am a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, on His mission in his power. That's what GPS, God's positioning system, wants to do for you. He wants to put you, as a child of God, he wants what's best for you. But even as a parent, you know you give instruction, right? Now as parents, we're flawed sometimes on our instruction. But your intent usually is to help make the best decisions, right? God is 100% anchor all the time. And he's on point. Let's all stand here and praise the worship team can come back. I want us to dwell on that thought for a second. And then just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. have you activated your GPS? <laughs> we did have a question at the conference, and it was... Uh, what does God's voice sound like? Because sometimes when it's GPS, you know, you're talking, you want to hear from God, and you're wondering, what is his voice here? Like, how do I know? Sometimes it might sound like your own voice. Um, a lot of times it comes through as thoughts. A lot of times it, it comes through as, sometimes get, people get picture images. Not for everything in life, but some, some things. Wow, I see God showing me that I need to do this. But remember this. It always has to line up with the Word of God, okay? Because you don't want to get caught up, well, God told me to do this, this, and that. And it doesn't line up with the Word of God. It contradicts a lot of things, okay? And know this, good things aren't always God things. I know we talk, I mean, Pastor Calvin and Tammy talk a lot about the, even get through people through discipleship in the Purple Book. Do you know when many people stop doing the Purple Book because their job started interfering? God's trying to grow them up like that plant. And all of a sudden, then they get busy with this, busy with that. Sometimes good things aren't even God things. Yeah. And so we got to identify that. But we're a child of God. Know this, GPS trying to tell you're a child of God. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're a child of God. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the GPS in you to give you direction in life. And then, now you're on His mission, no longer on your own. But you're in His power. And that's enough. And he's not going to ask you to do more than his power has equipped you to do. Because there's something in here the devil makes you see. You, I told you you couldn't do it. And sometimes it ain't even about that. Sometimes it's about just being faithful.
Because in America, we've equated success with this, 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 and this is how it's going to look. You know what success to God is? Faithfulness. Faithfulness to Him, His purposes and plans for your life. 